Hi, Robert Varden here from Seamaster Industries. Today we're here to talk to you about the Cool Glide Seaming System. Some of you may know this tool and the tool that sits on top of the carpet and doesn't go underneath the carpet like your conventional hot iron. Another unique thing about this particular tool is there's no heating element, so the tool never gets hot. There's no issue of burning yourself, your customer, or your carpet with the tool. Some confuse the tool as using microwave technology when in fact it actually uses RF wave, radio frequency wave. That wave is actually designed to work with a coating that is on your tape, and that is actually what melts the adhesive to bond your carpet together. The tool itself has three separate heat settings. Low, which is designed for that warm room where the installer is unfortunately still seeming directly on top of the cushion. That cushion's a good thermal insulator, so it holds heat in real well. So in most cases in the warm room, that low setting is gonna be fine. In the event the installer uses a seam board, several do and I strongly recommend it, be it a Teflon product, a plywood, a luau, what have you, those surfaces are gonna draw some of the heat out of your tape. You obviously need to compensate for that and bump up a heat setting. The high setting is maybe you get into a cold environment, cold carpet, using a seam board where you just might need a little bit more heat to get a good melt on that particular tape. The tool also has what we call the T button. They call it transverse mode. I just like to call it turn mode. T button is designed that when you get to the end of a seam, you can actually turn the tool and center it on the tape. What the T button does is it cuts the power down so that you're only sending enough energy to melt that small much of a surface of the tape. Nice application for the T button is actually in your doorways where you have the door frame, kind of need a little more heat to get around. Start out in T, go across, and end in T. That overlap will give you a nice melt on the edges of that door frame. The other big button on here we call the activation button. That's this big green button right here. Notice when I push this activation button at this point, and you can push either side of the button, just don't push the light in the center, that, that light just blinks. That blinking is just basically telling me that there is no tape underneath the tool. The tool is specifically designed to seek the tape before it will actually activate and start melting the tape. Speaking of the tapes, most of you will recognize the Cool Glide tape as looking at a tape like this. We, however, did make some nice improvements to the Cool Glide this year. The standard, or what we call the premium tape, is a four and a half inch wide tape that has beads in the center as well as on the edge. It's got a nice wide webbing on it. It also comes in silicone and non-silicone paper. Silicone basically is if the installer is seeming directly on top of the cushion, that silicone will aid him and not have him sticking to the cushion as much as a product that does not have silicone. A new product for us this year is what we call our standard Cool Glide. This particular tape, if you'll notice, has a little bit narrower webbing and just a little bit less adhesive than its big brother, the premium. I tell you, for a nice medium traffic residential application, this standard is an awesome tape and it will do just fine for you. And is much more economically priced than the premium version. The standard tape only comes in an uncoated version. It doesn't have a silicone version to it, just uncoated. But I'm gonna strongly recommend that you actually use a seam board. We're gonna kinda cover a product we released this year. What we wanted to do with the Cool Glide system is take a great tool and incorporate a great system for creating great seams around the tool. So the first thing we wanted to do is develop the surface in which that seam is being constructed on. Many installers today, against advice of CFI, certified floor covering installers, and even many manufacturers, are still seeming directly on top of the cushion. You are basically constructing one of the most sensitive issues sometimes to the consumer and you're constructing it on a surface that is unstable. Working on a hard surface, be it a Teflon surface, a wood surface, whatever you prefer or you find that works for you, that hard surface will enable you to make a better seam, better adhesive penetration than what you're going to make on top of that cushion. The next thing we wanted to do is we want to develop a, and simplify as best we could the seam sealing process. Now the system works well if you use a latex, an acrylic, it really doesn't matter. But there are so many benefits to using a hot melt adhesive from a glue gun. What we did, or what I've done with this particular gun, 
This tip has got a tip from Taylor Tools. I believe it's called the Micro Tip. The nice thing about this tip is the first thing I will do using the Cool Glide is I will take and I will put my tape and center it nicely underneath my seam. I will then take this particular gun with this tip, and you can use any gun, but I really like the tip. And I will run a nice little eighth inch bead of adhesive, might have got out of your frame there, down the side of this material. Once I've done that, I will then go ahead and insert my seam board. Notice with the Teflon seam board, we designed a 16 gauge stainless steel guide that is actually one sided. What that enables you to do is just lift one side of your material up, slide your seam board in place, go ahead and drop your other sheet down, start burning your seam. Another beautiful thing about using your hot melt versus your latex or acrylics is that there's no waiting. If you are using a latex or an acrylic product, you must let those products dry. And that doesn't just go with a cool glide, that goes with a conventional iron as well. Those are water-based products, they will not stick to a thermal plastic in any tape unless they are dry. You need to make sure those are dry. So the nice thing about using the hot melt is there's no waiting. I can just put it on and start burning my seam. Take your tool, get it nice and centered on the seam, and I'm trying to turn this so that you can get a good view of the operation of this tool. And this is for those that have never used the tool. I like to refer to the steps in using this tool as mark, move, and activate. And once you've done about 20 feet of the seam, it kind of starts becoming natural. By mark, I mean the movement of the tool is going to be from the front arrow on the side of the tool to the rear arrow on the side of the tool. So activate the section. Notice now that the green light that I was pushing earlier stays on. That green light staying on is basically telling you that it went down and it sensed the tape. It activated the tool. It will then see just exactly what heat setting you want that tape heated to. Once it's done that, your light simply goes off. At that point, mark, move, and activate. Then go ahead and put your seam together. Nice hard surface, nice smooth roller to get good adhesive penetration into the backing of the material. Again, once your light goes out, it's a simple process of mark it. A lot of times I will just use my finger. Mark, move, and activate. Go ahead and keep your seam nice and tight and put your seam together. Another nice little bonus about the Teflon seam board is it is so nice and easy to remove at the end of your seam. Last shot, mark, move. I'm going to activate that last shot. Now, in our industry, there's always been a lot of issues with seam peaking. For those of you that I'm sure you've experienced seam peaking, but have often maybe scratched your head as to the cause, it's really pretty simple. What you've done when you have cut the material to be seamed, you've basically then, once you've cut it, you've actually, when you seam it together, you're only attaching the device to the bottom of the material. When you then stretch that material, it's much like the tug-of-war theory. You know, when you pull on both sides of any object that's flexible, unlike, you know, stretching your carpet in, everything's going to pop up into that line of tension. So with your tape down here, as you stretch it, it pulls that seaming tape up into that line of tension you're creating when you power stretch that carpet. So what happens is that hinge suddenly now raises and there you have your seam peaking. Nice benefit out using your hot melt adhesive. Your hot melt adhesive by applying that bead, activating it with the tool, you actually will weld that edge, that cut edge, back together again. So instead of getting a seam that does this, you will actually get a seam that will do this, and it will lock that edge back together, and it can virtually eliminate your seam peaking. I've had people that have questioned how well that bead transfers across the seam when you only apply the one bead. Well, for any of you when questioning it, this was a piece that I seamed together earlier, and I actually broke it back open while the seam was still hot so that I could actually see how well that seam sealer transferred to the other side. 
And as you can see, it did a beautiful job of transferring across and sealing both of those cut edges. You know, another thing nice about this system that, you, that is unlike your conventional system is that any part of this seam here that I just put together for you, I can reactivate at any time from the surface. With a conventional seaming iron, if I were to go in to look at a seam such as this, and probably 80% of the time, if there's a seam issue, once you brush it up and you look and you look down at the actual seam construction itself, the majority of the time you'll find two things. Maybe a little bit of a gap, meaning your backings have separated slightly, or you've got a little bit of an overlap, where one of those edges have maybe just set right on top of the other, causing that yarn to kick up and give you that ledging effect make your seam more visible. To fix a situation like that with a conventional iron, you don't have too many choices really. You're pretty much going to have to pull it up. Take your old iron, melt the tape off the back, remake the seam, stretch it back in, and you just blew probably a half a day. Nice thing about the Cool Glide system is I can take that seam area that is affected. If I've got a gap in the seam, what I will usually do is bring my little power stretcher, my little crab stretcher in, drop it down and make it a little bit full so that I've got enough material to close that seam up. If I've got a small little overlap, I'll drop a few stay nails in so that I'm holding the stretch because I power stretch the material and then simply go ahead and just activate that particular section of the seam. Once again, you will wait for that light to go off. Once that light has went off, you can simply set the tool to the side and go ahead and open that area right back up again and make whatever adjustment you need to make in that seam. Put it right back down into the same adhesive, the same tape, give it a nice roll, give it a few minutes to cool, pull your stay nails, pull your crab stretcher, and go home. I've only touched on many, many of the benefits that can be done with this Cool Glide system. There will be other videos, actually, that we're going to make on pattern matching, the ease of dealing with pattern elongation, and several other things that I can do with this tool that I just can't really do very well with a conventional iron. So thank you for watching, and I'll look for you in another one. Have a good day.